All right, let's cut to the chase. You came to Napoli because you want to eat pizza in the birthplace of pizza itself. Not eating pizza in Napoli would be like visiting Rome without seeing the Colosseum. What's the point? Unless you don't like pizza, but who actually doesn't like pizza? I, I just don't like pizza. What? But before we eat the original baby, the original pizza pie, not baby, the, the first one, you know what I mean. Let's try another famous pizza in Napoli, pizza frita or fried pizza. Now this was actually the first pizza we ever tried in Italy or Napoli, which we ate at a pizza joint, a pizzeria, called Pizza 19, Pizza Frita 1947. 1947 Pizza Frita Napoli. There we go. Only took me three times. Now this pizza frita was very good. Its dough was nice and light and chewy with a little bit of an airy space in between. And the dough had a nice, lovely, salty taste as well. As expected, the marinara sauce was like nothing we've ever tried before. Deliciously rich and sweet. Not in like a sugary sweet way, but like a perfectly plucked ripe tomato sweet. This pizza, overall, by Napoli standards, was an eight out of 10, which is a really good first impression to pizza in Napoli and in Italy in general. Vanessa, what do you think of the fried pizza? It's amore. That's amore. Now the first pizzeria that's on most people's list is going to be L'Antica Pizzeria de Michele, or the Antique Pizza of Michele. Maybe that's how it goes. Anyway, this place is one of the oldest in the city because it was founded all the way back in 1870. So we are here at La Antica Pizzeria Michele, the most famous pizzeria in Naples. It's been open since 1870. We're gonna get a famous marinara pizza. Widely regarded to be one of the best pizzas in Naples. So that means one of the best pizzas in the world. We're super excited. It's also very famous globally due to the famous movie Eat, Pray, Love with Julia Roberts where she ate her pizza in this very pizzeria we're talking about. Now, as expected, the pizzas were fantastic. But again, by Napoli standards, which is like above anything you could possibly have in any other part of the world, I would give these pizzas a seven out of 10. Number five is average, seven is still very good, but not the exceptional to die for sort of range. Really good, but we're gonna talk about some better pies on this list. The next place on my list is going to be Gino y Toto Sorbillo, or Sorbillo for short. This pizzeria is located off of the famous walking street Via dei Tribulani, and it rivals L'Antica Pizzeria de Michele as far as its fame and notoriety. But to me, this place actually lives up to the hype. In my opinion, their marinara, or marinara, pizza is a solid, not solid, flawless 10 out of 10. The accent and present basil in the pizza. The sweet and rich marinara sauce that tastes like the perfectly plucked tomatoes. The soft melt in your mouth crust with that nice salty taste. The perfect amount of olive oil, the garlic adding that nice rich flavor. This pizza is perfection, everybody. This is, in my opinion, the one place you have to visit when eating pizza in Napoli. So that was Gino e Toto Sobilo. Phenomenal, the best margarita, it's not margarita, marinara I've had in my life. So freaking good. Located conveniently across the street from Sorbillo, there is a pizzeria and restaurante called Maz, or Maz, Maz, one of those different pronunciations. Now this place is a perfect option in case Sorbillo is too busy, but it isn't just an afterthought or like, a, oh, let's just go there instead. Their pizzas rival Sorbillo's in my opinion. You have the option to sit inside or outside, which is a great way to do some people watching and soak up the vibrant atmosphere on the street. Last night we were walking down the street trying to get some pizza at this place called Sorbillo, super long line. So we just walked around trying to find something else. Some really nice, friendly guys ushered us in from the restaurant saying they will pay us with pizza. They already had my attention. No, if we didn't like the pizza, they would pay for it. So that's a pretty strong sense of confidence in their food. So let's see how it is, guys. I would rate their pizzas a nine out of 10. Really good, one of my favorites I had in Napoli, but it's just missing a little bit of that extra something that Sorbillo provides, making it not quite the flawless pizza, but still definitely one of my favorites that I had in my time in Italy. Believe it or not, there is more to Neapolitan cuisine than just their pizza. Ragu, 
And no, not the ragu that's mass produced in plastic containers that you can use for any generic pasta in the US. If you confuse the two, the Italians will literally kill you. Ragu proved me wrong. This is some ragu. Ragu may be the best, man. The place I would personally recommend is going to be Tandem Ragu, which is actually a bit of an institution in Napoli. The pasta they served us with their famous ragu sauce was very, very good, really good. I would give it an eight out of 10, definitely really delicious. We also got a noodle dish or pasta dish with a different kind of sauce, but it was missing a little bit of that quality that I think the ragu sauce itself provided. So definitely go for the ragu sauce in any way, shape or form you can. Probably or possibly my favorite restaurant in all of Napoli, listen up everybody, is called Cavoli Nostri. Now this place is a must visit and its location is excellent as well because it's located right off of the Lungomare or the waterfront which has some really great views of the Bay of Naples and of course Vesuvius looming in the background. But what about the food? The food was excellent as well of course. Their lasagna was another one of my favorite things I had throughout my time in Italy. They had a vegan ricotta, which was very smooth and creamy and everything you'd want it to be. The red sauce, again, perfect tomatoes that can only be made from the volcanic soil from Mount Vesuvius, a perfect combination. And also you get the nice perfectly cooked noodles, salty, rich, with just a little bit of that natural sweetness from the tomatoes. 10 out of 10, easily one of my favorite things I've eaten in my life. I had to be honest. Their tiramisu was also the favorite tiramisu I had throughout my time in Italy. Oh, it was smooth, creamy, nice and rich again, and had the perfect amount of natural cocoa flavor and espresso flavor. Tiramisu typically isn't my favorite dessert, but this one was a dream, it was to die for. Because of that, I would give it a nine out of 10. It was the perfect chocolate cake or something, maybe a 10 out of 10, but tiramisu typically is the one I go for. But when in Italy, or when in Rome, you know that saying, Probably do. <laughs> Why are you eating it like that? Trying to get it put in the spoon. That was disgusting. It's phenomenal. Sorry, guys. <laughs> crap. Here, you can also try the classic Italian dish risotto, which is rice based. Started to forget that Italians ate other things besides pizza and pasta, right? Which was good. Not as good as the others. I'd give it about a 7 out of 10. We also got the arancini. Uh, appetizer, which is like a Sicilian sort of fried ball with some goodies inside. It's pretty good, but maybe a little too healthy for me. I'd give it me like a six and a half out of 10. We also got some fried cauliflower as an appetizer or a main, which was fine. It was good, but not as good as the others. I would give that about a six, but you have to go for the lasagna and of course the tiramisu, in my opinion. Now that we've started to introduce desserts into the equation, let's talk about two that you can try that are authentically Neapolitan. At a restaurant called Spuccia e Bevi, which is a bit of a cafe and bakery, you can get two authentically Neapolitan desserts, one being sfogliatelle, try saying that three times fast, and baba. Here are my thoughts. All right, everybody, welcome to the Wanderlust Woman Estates. This isn't my, uh, how I would normally look for the camera, but it, or screw it. <laughs> Anyway, these are sfogliatelle, which my pronunciation is terrible. This is one of the most famous pastries in Napoli, um, probably up there with croissants or cornetti as you would call them in Italian. So I'm really excited to jump in and give it a try because this is a quintessential thing to try in Naples for my research. Mmm, that's really good. Mmm, on the outside, it's like a nice shortbread sort of thing and it's really moist on the inside, as you can see. So we also had to try another staple of Naples, which I don't know if it originated here. This is called Baba, which is also like a rum-soaked sponge cake. So can I get drunk eating it? I don't know. We shall see. And yeah, it smells like alcohol like pretty badly. So it'll be interesting to try it. Definitely wanted to get a good idea of the pastry side of Naples besides just the savory foods that we've already covered. So let's dig in. Oh my god. That's no joke. I don't know if Vanessa's gonna like this one. So the sfogliatelle is really freaking good. Definitely would be a great breakfast pastry because it's sweet, but not too sweet. Uh, has that nice soft filling inside and a delicious sort of shortbread outside. I would give that easily an 8.5 out of 10. Now the baba, I don't know if that's really for me, to be honest, or maybe it's the bakery. I don't know. I've only had one place to try it, so that's what I have to judge it based on. It was a little too soggy for my liking. It felt like instead of just I would think drizzling it with rum would be better, but it was absolutely soaked in rum. So very soggy, very soft, and the rum was a little too overpowering. So I wouldn't get that again personally. I would give that maybe like a four, three out of 10, to be completely honest. 
you can also try some of their other beautifully presented and wonderfully packaged desserts to go or in the restaurant. And you can also get some food if you want to hang out and eat something a little bit savory. The food was a bit of like a sandwich sort of thing. Pretty good, above average. Nothing compared to the other Italian food. So I give it maybe like a six out of 10. A little bit above average and really good if you're craving something else. Another Italian classic uh, baked good or pastry is going to be il cornetti or the croissant. The croissant. There we go, finally got to English. Now, the place I went to get uh, my vegan croissant was actually located right off of Via Toledo and right next to a cafe called La Focacceria. Really difficult to find this uh, cafe's name, but we got a nice croissant, cornetti, with a cappuccino, a perfect combination. Altogether, I would give this combo maybe like a 7.5 out of 10. Really good, just don't have your coffee too late in the evening or you won't sleep a wink. The espressos and cappuccinos are strong. Another place with both really good food and a good sweet option is going to be called Un Sorriso Integrale Amico Bio. <laughs> That's a really long one, I know. Tucked away behind the magical Via dei Trivulani, this place has a really charming setting, both of a bit of an outdoor sort of garden-y sort of area, and then a wonderful sort of like Italian home that they uh, made into a bit of an eating area with the beautiful tiles and Italian aesthetic. More importantly, they have a really cute and friendly cat. I don't have any food for you. This is some infection. Well, I didn't expect this. <laughs> There's seitan cutlets that was served in a really nice wine and lemony sauce. Were rich, divine, ah, oh, very full of flavor and tasty and moist and chewy. I would give those about an 8.5 out of 10. Really, really good. Small portions, but really rich in flavor. Now, something else that was really good and rich in flavor was, of course, the souffle chocolato or chocolate souffle. This thing, again, was very moist, very rich, ooey and gooey and oozing and goozing that delicious chocolate sauce on the inside with a little bit of powdered sugar. But this was a solid 9.5 out of 10. I would give it a 10 out of 10 if it didn't burn the inside of my mouth both times. <laughs> Afterwards, if you want to cool down and soothe your burnt mouth, there are some great places to get some gelato located down the Via dei Tribulani. The two places I would recommend is going to be one, Mozzelato. Here they have a really good chocolato gelato that is great to put in a cone and walk around the street with. Another great option on the same street, a little bit closer to Un Sorriso. You remember the rest of the name? Don't make me say it again, guys. Don't make me say it again. It's going to be called Gelato Shimia or Skimia Factory, which they have a couple of vegan a lot of options as well. Really good to eat these and walk down this wonderful street and kind of do some people watching, look at some stores, or maybe uh, scope out some restaurants you want to eat at in the future, which we were always doing, always. Oh yeah, and how did ice cream taste? The gelato, sorry, not ice cream. Never gonna confuse them again, Italians. They were really good, really rich, almost like a cold, semi-frozen, thick custard or pudding frosting melts in your mouth as soon as you bite into it. You can't even bite into it. Your teeth just lightly sinks into it and has a really rich, nice natural chocolate taste. Really loved it, a really good treat and really cheap as well. Definitely would give these about an 8.5 out of 10 in my book. And last but not least, Oficina Vegana is a great place for some reasonably priced vegan fare. It may not be your typical Neapolitan sort of dishes, but the food is tasty, it's filling, and it's maybe a nice little break from the pastas and the pizzas and the ragu and the red sauce if you're in Italy for a long period of time. Their sandwiches are, number one, about as big as your head, and I would give them about a 6.5 out of 10 for taste. Definitely above average. I like their sandwiches a bit more than Spuccia e Bivi, but the place itself is really nice. The staff is very welcoming and friendly and will help you out and has a sort of a little bit of a personable cafe feel. So that being said, even though the food wasn't as highly rated, in my opinion, as some of the Italian stuff that you have to only eat when it's made in Italy, I would still really recommend it, again, if you want a change of pace or if you just want some filling, cheap, tasty vegan food in Italy as well. So those are the foods I ate during my time in Napoli. When in Naples, I'd really try to focus in on that Neapolitan cuisine because you're only there for a 
set period of time. Maybe you'll be there for even less time than me. So I definitely recommend checking out Neapolitan food in Naples. Let me know what looks the best to you. Have you eaten at any of these places before? Or do you think that you'll like Neapolitan pizza as much as I did? Let me know down in the comments below. Thanks for watching everybody. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and check out the rest of my Italy content, such as things I've done in Napoli, Ischia, Capri, Sorrento, Amalfi, and soon coming Rome, of course. So that's it everybody. Thank you. See you in the next video. Peace.